Hello folks, you join me on approach to Luton, something that I didn't really mention in my last video about MSFS 2024 Sim Update 2, and that is we now have native DLSS 4 integration. That is great news, and it means you don't have to swap files anymore, mess around with NVIDIA Inspector, NVIDIA App, all that kind of stuff. It is built in. And remember, this is beta, so things will probably, you know, break and there'll be issues, of course. But there is some really good news here for VR. Not only do we have favorited rendering and DFR now, but we also have this DLSS 4 support. So at the moment, it looks like they're using preset J rather than preset K, which you've all been using. And you know what? I think there's a little bit less artifacting for some reason. But I think the biggest deal for me is... I don't know why this is the case guys, I really don't, but I feel that the glass cockpits, they just look a bit sharper to me now, which is fantastic news. And most of the time now, I'm quite happy to use DLSS 4, even though really with a 5090 you don't really need to, you can use TAA mode, especially when you're doing IFR flights, but you can get away with DLSS 4 with glass cockpits, that is when you're really looking at those dials and gauges and displays. There is still ghosting um, in certain situations, especially with the airspeed tape, admittedly. But this, honestly, is really great news because I think over time, DLSS 4 is just going to get better and better. It's already really, really good. Now, so far, I've tested Sim Update 2 with the Mega Next, the big screen beyond, the Pilot's Crystal Light, and now the Vario XR4. And um, if you're interested, I can make some separate videos on those particular headsets. But overall, I've got to say that it is a good start for Sim Update 2, in my opinion. And I'm starting to fall in love a little bit with this Sim. Not completely though, there's lots of issues still need to be fixed. Talking of fixes, the latest beta has now added the option to move the EFB when it's undocked in VR and also made it interactable in VR when externalized, although Asobo hasn't quite got this right yet, as unfortunately there's now two EFPs because the biggest one in your face works, as Sven put it in the MSFS forums, and here's a picture of what it looks like. So yeah, there's still work to do here, but there is some other good things that they've added, such as an exposure compensation slider, which is really handy, especially when sometimes the cockpit can be overexposed or vice versa. The outside can look too exposed and the cockpit is too dark. So this is something that can be played around with now, which is really great. They've also fixed some stability and performance problems, such as the crash inside a GPU driver due to, as they put it, off by one error inside our texture loading code. No idea what that means, folks, but it sounds good. And they've also fixed long loading times after launching a flight. So things are moving at a very fast pace. And in terms of quad views, I'm really excited to show you this scene, folks. And there's a really interesting post on the MSFS forum by Matt explaining in detail how it's done. Let me know in the comments below, have you actually joined the BT yet? Have you tried favorited rendering? It is a game changer guys, it really is. And thankfully, Asobo are definitely listening to VR users now and it only bodes well for the future of this sim. I still recommend 2020 over 2024 at this point, but let's see what happens once Sim Update 2 is officially released, which could be quite a while from now. I'm guessing probably at least a month, maybe two. But please keep making sure that you report all your bugs on the official forum because we need to work together to get this sim to where it needs to be. Thanks for watching, folks. Take care and bye for now.